Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made this piece here. I don't really know how to describe what it is, but it's basically just a high-waisted pair of bottoms with this double-layered three-quarter circle skirt attached to it. By three-quarters, I just mean it doesn't go 100% of the way around the waist, and that was just for technical purposes. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how I drafted the skirt pattern, how I did the lettuce leaf or fishing line hem, and how I put it all together. So yeah, there's a lot in this video, and I figure let's just get right into sewing. So I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so we're gonna start with the skirt that I'll be attaching to the bottoms. I want the skirt to have a flouncy hemline, so in order to accomplish that, we're gonna draft a circle skirt and add fishing line to the hem, which we'll get to later. So first things first, I need to figure out the radius of the waist measurement. Picture the waist measurement as a circle and the radius is the distance from the middle of the circle to the edge of the circle. In this case, my client's waist is 30 inches, but since we're using spandex, I'm gonna deduct 20% from the total measurement to take stretch into account and I'm left with 24 inches as the full waist measurement. Now we get into the fun math. To figure out the radius of 24, we have to use the following formula. 24 equals 2 pi r, so 24 equals 2 times 3.142 times r. So 24 equals 6.284 times r, and 24 divided by 6.284 equals r, so r equals 3.819. Now that we've got our radius figured out, I take my pattern paper and fold it twice, once lengthwise and once widthwise. Measuring from the apex of the corner where all of the folded edges meet, which is the center of the circle of the waist, I'm measuring out exactly 3.819 inches, which is our radius, and making small markings in a spherical line. Once my markings are all jotted down, I connect them with one solid line. As for the length of the skirt, I simply measured from my client's waist to where I wanted the skirt to sit, which in my case was 12 inches, and measured from the previous line we just made and again made markings and connected them. Once I was happy with the pattern, I cut it out using my rotary cutter. Next, I need to figure out the measurement of the gap I need to cut out of the circle skirt in order to get the look I'm going for. Here, I'm taking my pattern for the bottoms and measuring the total length of the front waistline, which is 6.75 inches. Keeping in mind, this pattern is just half of the bottoms. I want the sides of the skirt to sit two inches from the side seam, so I need to deduct that from 6.75, which leaves us with 4.75. I also need to deduct half an inch for seam allowance, which gives us 4.25 total. Now I need to make this marking on the skirt pattern. All I'm doing here is measuring 4.25 inches from one of the fold lines, making a mark, and then folding the skirt pattern in half along that same fold line, since the measurement we just took were for half the bottoms. Then I measured down the hemline from my marking and cut. Once that's finished, I'm left with my 3 quarter circle skirt with an 8 and a half inch gap in the waistline. Next is cutting the patterns out of the fabric. For the bottoms, I fold my fabric in half, line up the center of the bottom pattern along the fold of the fabric and cut. Once I have the lycra cut, I use my 505 spray, which is a temporary adhesive, and use it to secure the lycra to the lining fabric and then cut again. Waistband, I just spray the wrong side of the lycra with 505, fold it over onto itself, press it securely together, place a ruler along the folded edge of the fabric, and cut a two inch wide line straight across.
using a four-way stretch mesh, which I folded in half, and then I take my circle skirt pattern, fold that in half as well, and place the fold of the pattern along the fold of the fabric and cut around it. Since I'm doing a double layered skirt, I repeat this process twice. To hem the skirt, I'm going to be using fishing line to get that full bouncy look. I want a semi-tight curl, so to get that effect, I'm going to be using fishing line that can hold up to 40 pounds, so it's on the thicker side, a toilet paper roll, a hair dryer, and some tape. To do this, I just take one end of the fishing line and tape it to one end of the toilet paper roll. I wind the line around the roll and then tape the end of the line to the other side of the roll. I set my hair dryer to the hottest setting and then gradually heat up the fishing line until it's hot to the touch. Then I just leave it to cool for a few minutes. You should be left with a nice semi-tight ringlet. Now that my fishing line is prepped, I take it over to my sewing machine to get to work on the hemline. It's actually a really simple process. I set my machine to a zigzag stitch with a width of 5 and a length of 1.5. The goal is to encase the line in a tube of mesh. To do this, I set the line on the mesh and fold a quarter inch of the mesh over it. Essentially, you want the zigzag to go back and forth over the fishing line, which is why it's important to have your zigzag set to a wide width. You want the needle to catch the edge of the folded mesh on one stitch and then miss the fabric altogether on the other, creating a nice tight casing over the fishing line. When it's all said and done, you should be left with something that looks like this. The next step is very important. As you can see, the fishing line pokes out of the top of the skirt along the waistline, which is no bueno since it'll move and shift around, poking the person wearing it, even after it's been sewn into the waist of the bottoms. To stop this from happening, I'm gonna use a lighter. Since the fabric is a polyester blend, it burns and melts like plastic, so all I did was line up the edge of the fishing line with the waist, put a flame to it for a few seconds, and squish it together. This caused the fishing line and the mesh to melt together and hold everything in place. Repeat this process to all of the loose ends. Moving on to the bottoms, just line up the side seams right sides together, stitch it together with approximately half inch seam allowance, and run it through the serger to finish off the edges.
attach the skirt, mark two inches from the side seams as originally planned, pin the sides of the skirt in place, and stitch end to end right along the waistline. For the waistband, fold it in half, measure it to the same width as your bottoms, stitch it and serge. To attach it to the bottoms, flip it inside out and place it around the waistline of the bottoms over top of the skirt layers with the non-folded side facing up towards the waist and pin it in place. Stitch along the waistline and then serge to finish off the edge. To finish off the leg holes, I'm using 3 8 inch elastic. I place the elastic approximately a quarter inch from the edge of the leg holes, cover the elastic fully in fabric by folding it over top, and then I zigzag it in place using a stitch set to 2.5 lengths and 5 widths. Remember to keep a nice steady tension in the elastic while sewing. Lastly, I wanted the side edges of the skirt to match and wanted them to roll outwards. Similar to curling your hair, I just wrapped the front hemline around the toilet paper roll away from the face, used the hair dryer to heat up the fishing line like we did earlier, waited for it to cool off, and then released. And that's really all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.